Hey guys, it's Wave618. It is the 5th of August 2019 and today we're going to do a video on the S&P 500 but in general I want to talk about the, the US economy and um, generally where it's going to go from here. So first of all I'm going to say straight off the cuff that uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news but this video is going to be largely about how there's a setup at play at this moment in time that suggests a very big sell-off in the stock markets. So I'm going to show that both from a technical or mainly from a technical analysis point of view but we're going to throw in some fundamentals as well. We're going to be looking at the S&P 500 chart. We'll have a quick look at the Dow Jones. We're going to have a look at the history of stock prices and we're also going to have a look at the bonds and yield markets also which are actually going to give us a very good sign of what's about to happen. A lot of people are waiting for a yield curve in inversion. Of course, we've been seeing it inverting, but it's not yet. We've not yet seen that inversion between the two-year yields and the ten-year yields for the treasuries. So, I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you a chart, in fact, that I'm pretty sure you've never seen before. Pretty sure of it, and it's actually it's really going to open your eyes. It's probably the highlight of this video. I'm going to leave it to the end, but it's really going to emphasize the main point in this video which is the fact that we could be seeing an absolutely huge sell-off in the stock markets now I want you to take into consideration that this is not financial advice okay this is my objective opinion I'm, I'm a chartist I go off patterns on the charts obviously I, I do have an understanding of yeah, a very very basic understanding of economics you know I have read up a, a lot about it but I'll be the first to admit that it's a generally a basic understanding so this is not financial advice, this is my objective opinion on what I'm seeing at play in the markets right now. I'll explain how that potential move could break down, I'll explain the point of invalidation. But um, yeah, there's plenty of interesting things to discuss in this video. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. All right, guys. So let's get straight into this. So first things first. I'm gonna we've got the weekly uh, time frame chart for the S and P five hundred here. Now, uh, so following our two thousand and eight uh, recession here, we've had this move up. Now the way I've got it is this wave one. So first of all, I have a tendency to use Elliott wave a lot. I think it's a, an excellent uh, technical analysis indicator. So. Uh, I'm going to be largely talking about Elliott Wave here. Um, now, first of all, we have our Wave 1 here. I've got this as a running flat Wave 2. This being uh, Wave 3 up to here. And then the 4 is now playing out. I'll go into what the Wave 4 is about to do. But um, first of all, let me justify this Waves 1, 2 and 3. So on the log scale here, let's just make it like that. So on the log scale, so you can see here, if we take our Fib extension tool, look at the wave one, extend it from the beginning of wave three, where does our 1.618 extension take us to? It takes us right to this point. We get the sell-off at that level. So for me, that sell-off at the 1.618 shows that this is being validated as, a, as an extension, suggesting that this is our wave three. Now, a lot of people were thinking that this was some kind of a, expanded flat wave 4 finishing here however I'm going to show you the, the playout that I'm looking at happening here which is rather than an expanded flat finishing here we're going to see an expanded triangle and you can see the labeling that I've got for this already you can see it's an A, B, C, D and E now this has happened before it happened in the 1960s I'm going to show you the demonstration of that in a moment but the problem with this calling this the end of the wave 4 it's largely the fact that it was too shallow a retracement. If we start our wave three from here, which where we've got it. So we've got it here. Okay, it's come down to the 0.236. But classically, you'll test the 0.382. And one of the important things about Elliott Wave is typically the wave four will eat into or at least test 
the wave 4 of a lesser degree. So here, this is the wave 4 of this wave 3 here. So I've got this as a wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the subwave count for the wave 3. Okay, so typically you'll get your wave 4 eat into this wave. So either we're going to test it at around 2100 or we're going to come and test the 0.5 fib retracement uh, at around uh, at around 2000. Yeah, so those are the two fib levels that it could easily test. So as you can see, that is a huge sell-off. So if we just have a look, if we just look at what the percentage sell-off is for that. So the 382 retracement would be a 26% sell-off. The 0.5 retracement, that's a 34% sell-off. Okay, so a very big retracement there. Now take into account these this fib retracement tool, this is using the so actually it wasn't even on the log base scale, it should be on the log base scale. So actually the 0 0.382 brings us to around the 2000 mark. Okay, and you can see now you can see we haven't even reached the 0.236. So this is the way it should be used. We should be using the, the fib scale, uh, the fibs on the log scale. That's generally what we use for these longer uh, term price moves. And so yeah, we, we haven't even tested the 0.236. So this is why I feel that this wave four is incomplete and it needs to come down further. Now, as I say, let me show you how we had a, a very similar play out here in the 1960s. So this was our stagflationary period during our Vietnam War during this time period also. We had our A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Now that might not be that clear here. You can see the chart's not so clear on trading view here on the S&P. So I just want to pull up the, um, the Dow as well. So if we just have a look at the Dow, I've got a few more markings on this chart. So we'll pull up the monthly. So this was the equivalent on the Dow. So we've got A, B, C, D, and E. And you can see this was a it was a wave four. So this is our Great Depression here, 1929, big sell-off. And then from here, we're having our five waves up. So we've got our one, two, three, 1960 stagflation wave four, expanding triangle, and now we're in our final fifth wave up. So this of the fifth wave, we've got this is our wave one, wave two three, four, and then of the fifth wave, I've got this as a one, two, three, four, and we're now in our fifth, and I believe we're in the wave four of the fifth. Okay, so from after, we're gonna see a sell-off, as believed to around 2,000, oh sorry, we're on the down now, so this is could come down to around 18,000. Yeah, so it's a big sell-off, before then actually pushing higher to all-time highs again. Okay, this is a pitchfork. I generally use pitchforks. If you're not, if you're new to my channel, then I generally use the pitchforks using the first two waves of an Elliott wave count. I find that's how I find it to be the most accurate. You can see this is a shift pitchfork here on the log time scale, and price has really adhered to these lines very, very nicely. So you can see here we're in a bull trend. Okay, so long term, this is all still very, very bullish. Um, Okay, so that's just what, how I want to show you how we've seen this expanded triangle play out before. It's, it's more clear on the S&P, but um, I believe that's the, the kind of play out that we're about to see right now. Now, let's just bring in a little bit of fundamentals also. So let's go back to the S&P. We'll stick to the weekly. So this sell-off, we can see here, pretty dramatic sell-off. Now, what happened? So... Just uh, Wednesday just gone, we obviously had the, the Fed announcement that they're going to cut rates. So that's actually the first time they've cut rates in 10 years. I just want to show you this graphic here. So this is where they've just recently uh, reduced rates. Okay. Now the last time they reduced rates was just prior to the previous recession. Okay, 2007. And prior to that was 2000, where we had the recession following the dot-com bubble. Okay. So generally, when you see those decreasing rates, it's the Fed anticipating economic downturn. And um, so it's a very concerning sign, especially when you get that 
with confluence with technical analysis suggesting that we're actually going to see the downward price movement also. So combining those two things, the fact that we're seeing interest rates drop off for the first time, as well as the fact that the, there's a, a technical analysis play out also supporting that sell-off, for me that's very concerning. But um, another thing I want to bring up, so we are in an expansion phase that has lasted over 10 years. This is a, a, a record. We've never ever seen this. Since stock markets have been in existence, we have not seen this. I want to show you a list of economic expansions in the United States. This is Wikipedia. So here they just show you the longest duration. So the previous record was our dot-com bubble. This was from 91 to 2001. That's 10 years. It's 120 months. Yeah, We're now in an economic expansion since 2009, since our 2008 sell-off, the, the financial crisis, we have been just continuing up. Uh, so it's been 121 months now. So it's a record. We've exceeded the 120 months. So it's another thing. We're overstretched. Yeah, we've seen economic expansion for a very long period. So just pulling this up again. If this is to continue higher at this point, that would suggest that all this was were buy orders which would take price much higher much higher so how if that's the case how long is this expansion phase going to go on for we've reached our record of 121 months so if we're about to go much higher because we've just seen all this accumulation here then how long is this expansion phase going to go on for and that's why again it's another thing to me that suggests this is not accumulation but rather distribution because we've seen far too much expansion. We've, we've reached a record. We're now seeing decreasing interest rate cuts. Okay. So these are the key points I want to put out there. Now, I want to show you also just how people talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency being volatile assets, being very unstable because of the... the, the um, because of what the chart looks like. It's a parabolic move. I just want to show you if we... Let's pull up the Dow Jones and we'll talk about parabolic price moves now, okay? So let's go on the monthly. Now this is the log scale. It all looks pretty regular, you know, it's gone up. Nice, nice uptrend here. Let's go off the log scale now. Let's look at the linear scale, okay? This is the linear scale here. Okay, does it bring... It looks like a bubble chart, doesn't it? So quite... Uh, similar to the Bitcoin chart, really. So people talk about Bitcoin being volatile and making these unhealthy price movements going vertical. This whole stock market is doing exactly the same thing. So the higher it goes, there's no. I'm not saying that this is all going to collapse at this moment in time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're going to see a retracement. But as we get higher, it's going to get more volatile. The sell-offs are going to be more dramatic. Uh, we're going to see a lot more volatility. So yeah, I just want to illustrate that point because I think a lot of people overlook that. They get kind of, uh, because this uptrend has gone on so long, people are forgetting the fact that, you know, it, this has gone on a long time. I mean, we're only dating back to 1915 here. Yeah, stock markets go back a lot further than that. And I'll show you another graphic in a moment to, to show you the history of uh, stock prices. But um, yeah, we're only going back well, only, I'm saying we're going back to 1915 here, and you can see, well, this is our Great Depression, this is 1929, this is our Great Depression here. You can barely see it on the chart. Look at this, look how much the price swings. This is in our uh, financial crisis here. Yeah, so now, when we see a financial downturn, it is gonna be a lot more exaggerated. That's just the nature of the beast now. That's what we're dealing with. The whole thing has been built on borrowed money, and so when a mistake happens, it's going to be catastrophic. When something good happens, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, but so, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. And as I say, I wanted to show you this other chart. So this is stock prices. This is uh, US stock prices. This is going back to 1789 when it all began. OK, so as I showed you the Dow Jones, this is our post depression here. This is our Great Depression. And I said we're making five waves up, so this would be our wave one, two, three, coming up to here. This is our stagflationary 1960s sideways movement, the expanding triangle, um, to make our wave four. And then we're going into our wave five. And as I say, this is our wave four or five, and now we're 
making another five waves up of which we're in the fourth wave and we're going to go higher um, but you can see back here the way I, I've got this is probably this is our first wave up second wave here it's probably our third wave fourth wave fourth wave does not overlap wave one you can see fourth wave comes down to 41.2 whilst wave one comes up to 36.6 so they're not overlapping so it's a valid count so we've got a one two three four and then five so this is our grand super cycle phase right here yeah so i'm not i'm not going to come up with suggestions of what happens when we finally reach five or five or five or five but um just want to show you the grand scheme of things where we're, we're very we're seeing very exaggerated price moves here and every time we see a sell-off it's going to be a big sell-off so um yeah just wanted to put that one out there as well so just pulling up so back on smp now so yeah i'm looking at this expanding triangle i've explained that i'm, I'm looking at as likely to test this previous consolidation here now I want to move on to a little bit about yields, yield curves, uh, and uh, bonds. Okay, because this I explain. I'm going to show you a chart soon that you've probably not seen before. Now, first of all, okay, so this is a perf chart looking at the yields. So for the two-year yields, ten-year yields, thirty-year yields, and the five-year yields as well. Okay, now the black line is our thirty yield. Red is our 10 yield, blue 5 yield, and green is 2. And you can see generally what happens. So in 2000, around here, yeah, we had our recession. So what happens in a recession? The yields go down. So yields follow interest rates. So when you get your interest rates coming down, the yields come down. And what happens? Initially, all the yield, uh, the yield charts are together, kind of clumped together. As they come down, they separate. Okay, so that's what happens. They get further apart. Then they come back, get back together again. And you can see in 2007, after and we, we then saw them sell off again. Okay, and they get further apart. Okay, so you can see the two year yield gets much further apart than the 30 year yield. Okay, now they've come back together and now they're declining again. Again, another suggestion that we're going into a recessionary phase. Okay, so that's just looking at the perf chart to show you these yields. Now remember, yields are inverse to the bond price. Okay, so we know that over the last 30 years or so, we've been in a bond bull market. Okay, um, now I want to show you about the yield inversion that everyone's talking about. So this, rep so this shows you the difference when we take away the two-year yield from the 10 year yield, okay? Obviously, the short term yield should always be less than the 10 year yield, okay? And when, when, it, when it becomes more, then that's what we call inversion of the yield, uh, yield curve, okay? So I've drawn this red dotted line across the chart. This is at the zero point. This is at the point where if you take the two year yield away from the 10 year yield, you get zero. Yeah, so when you go below zero, that suggests that the two-year yield is greater than the 10-year yield, and that's when what we call an inverted yield chart. So we've seen this So since our bond market rally from the 80s. We've seen our, uh, an inversion here, here, and here, and now everyone is waiting for this to come lower. And I'm going to explain to you why we don't need to see that by showing you a chart that we've not seen before. Or probably not seen before because I've not seen it's a chart that I've stumbled across by thinking to assess it myself rather than reading about it anywhere. If you've read about this chart anywhere that I'm about to discuss, then fair enough, let me know. So I, that's, I think that's pretty interesting, but uh, yeah, I stumbled across it and I think it's very fascinating. Um, so yeah, that's just I wanted to really explain what yield chart inversion really means. Uh, I want to show you how we've not reached it. We are inverting because we're downtrending here, but we've not inverted, okay? So you have to go under this red line for it to be inverted. Now, let's have a look at, this is 10-year uh, um, yields. 
you can see so I just really want to show you this one just to show you the pitchfork really so uh, again I use pitchforks a lot with my trading so we've got our first three pivots first pivot second pivot third pivot and you can see this modified shift pitchfork here has contained price very nicely um, at the end here we're seeing this really nice bounce off the lower warning line and then a bounce off the upper warning line and right now we're sitting at the meeting line we may get a bit of a bounce in um, in yields here okay but ultimately we're downtrending still the yields are still going down all right um, the next one SPX so this is a chart you've probably not seen before so we all know about the VIX uh, there's not much to say about this one I'm not sure why I've included it actually but yeah the S&P 500 divided by the VIX yeah, which is our volatility index I just wanted to show you here how you can see there is a bit of a pattern developing we're seeing converging um, distribution of the chart here it's certainly converging it's getting closer together and yeah we can see we're starting to downtrend here of these highs so yeah whether we see this break down and come down lower with the S&P falling that's a possibility so I just wanted to put this out there because again not many pe people take into consideration the S&P 500 and the VIX but not many people look at the relationship between the two um, so I thought that was pretty interesting you might want to check it out have a play around with the chart but the chart that I think is the most interesting is the next one that I'm going to pull up now so this chart is the two-year yield divided by the 10-year yield okay now you can see here very clearly so this is the linear scale first of all the log scale is completely different yeah so this is our linear scale and you can see the trend lines are completely different it doesn't incorporate these lows here the log scale you can see we're seeing a completely different picture so these trend lines have been tested several times here so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost to the T. I like the way that these lines are really being respected. For me, that suggests that this is a, a very strong chart. And it's a chart that's either algos are following or smart money is following. But this is significant. Now, I want you to think for a moment, what is this chart telling us? It's the two-year yield divided by the 10-year yield. Now, if the two-year yield is greater than the 10-year yield, you're going to get a positive number. Yeah, so greater than... So, well, essentially greater than... Uh, sorry, you're going to get greater than one. Yeah? So here. Okay, let's put our horizontal line on here. Because this is a really important thing to grasp here. Okay, so again, when we see our yield inversion, you're going to have the two-year yield greater than the 10-year yield. So we saw it here, here, and here. The thing is now, I don't think we're going to see the two-year yield come above the 10-year yield to cause that inversion. To cause the inversion, we need to see the two-year yield come above the 10-year yield and go above this red line. Yeah, because it'll be more than a greater than a one to one ratio. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to come down and respect this trend line, which means this is going to get front run. So we, essentially, you could see a recession that front runs everybody who's talking about yield curve inversion. We may not see yield curve inversion, is what I'm trying to say. Look at the way this slope, uh, down sloping trend line takes into consideration these highs here. And it means that you know we're going to see resistance here off this trend line before we see the yield inversion. So whilst people are waiting for that yield inversion, we could very easily just see the sell-off. So this is the point I wanted to uh, put out there. For, and you can see people are getting another bite of the cherry here because we've come down and we'll come back up here for people to have another opportunity to sell. Okay. So. This is probably the earliest you're going to see this signal here. Okay, so I wanted to put it out there now. Now, I'm not telling everyone that this is all going to be catastrophic. This is my objective view on the markets at this moment in time. Okay, this chart here 
I think will probably be the most valuable to you because it's probably, well, I don't think it's one that you've looked at before. Maybe it is, but uh, yeah, I think this is the most interesting in my opinion. I certainly haven't seen anyone else talk about it. I certainly haven't seen uh, Reddit in any books. So yeah, I think that's very, very interesting. The fact that we may not see the yield chart inversion, which everyone is waiting for. Um, but yeah, the point of invalidation for this whole thing is obviously if price does end up coming back up and we take out, we start, we'll basically see all time highs. So if, as soon as we see price above here and you can forget about this count altogether, it will be invalidated. Okay, but until we see that, for me, this is looking like it's about to play out and we're going to test this uh, horizontal price action here, this block of, day, uh, block of orders here. Um, look already, we've seen a dramatic sell off which to me suggests that this pattern is playing out, okay? Um, yeah, I think I've pretty much summarized everything I wanna say. So without trying to scare people or anything like that, um, this is my objective view on the markets right now. Take it as you will. Um, again, this is not financial advice. This is what I'm seeing. Uh, do your own research. Decide if you think this is garbage. Decide if you think this is useful and do your own thing. But remember, this is not financial advice. Uh, this is how I'm looking at the markets right now. And yeah, let's see what happens, guys. All right, take care.